What's up guys, the news media here coming at you with another retro deck profile. Today we're going to look at Chris LeBlanc's YCS Atlanta Heretic Rulers for January 2014 format. This was uh, Firewater, so Mermails, Firefist, Girgia, a little bit of um, Jeff Jones Harpies, which we did, and this deck, they're a lot of fun. I really like this deck. I like it more than April 2014 because we don't have Soul Charge, and Soul Charge makes me feel like a total idiot, so I don't have to, you know, do that for this deck. So these combos are a little bit more straightforward. So for the Heretics, we have the three Tafnuit, which is the Cyber Dragon one. So we can special it if our opponent has a monster. We just pop this guy out there as kind of the typical combo starter. And if we don't have that, we also have our normal summonable one in our three set. Uh, this one copies the level. So it is level five, but it can copy the level of the vanilla. So the level van uh, vanilla is level six. So we're able to copy our Labradorite Dragon with this. So it's not really clunky or anything like that. We have no issues there. Um, and then if they do decide to like Valor or Fiendish Chain, so we can't make a rank six, we have Star Eater and the uh, Labradorite's a tuner. So it's level 11. And then we have our three Sue. We don't play the Monster Pop, the Neb Thet. Um, card's not that great. We just play the nine Heretics. We don't really need anything else. Um, for this deck, essentially, this is just the three that we need, or the three different monsters that we need. So just nine heretics, and then of course the four dragon rulers that we have here. Um, these are our kind of our late game pushes. Uh, we can summon them from the deck with a tomb. A lot of the times, the combo uh, would be just get both uh, like two level sixes out with both vanillas. So you would make a six with the vanilla and the monster you summoned. And then you would summon a Dragon Ruler, and you'd make an 8 with the level 1 that you had out there. So that's kind of like the play there. So you use the Flameville Guard like that. So there are two Vanillas here, of course. Um, the Labrador and the Flameville Guard. So you have the level 1 and you have the level 6. So this would be your overlay. And then this would be for your Synchro play. And if they Valor, you have this for the Neb Thet and things like that. And then the last tuner, we have uh, one Debris Dragon. We can use it to make Star Eater again with our Dragon Rulers. Or we could summon Guard back. Um, and use it as an 8, and then this is a Scrap Dragon target. Or, if we can get two Dragon Rulers on the board, you could use this and another Dragon to make Star Eater, and then the Flameville Guard that we summon with the Debris Dragon, and then make an 8. So that is a, a play that I've done before, where I put two Dragon Rulers on the board, and then rather than make a rank 7, I could summon Debris Dragon, bring Black Flameville Guard, sync with them, like sync with the first dragon in this, and then sync with the other dragon, and then uh, you have better plays that way rather than just, you know, making like a Draco sack or something. You have options, essentially, um, which is really cool in this deck. Um, so the combos aren't necessarily super linear, but they are kind of linear. It's basically how much damage you need to get on board, how safe you feel based on what your opponent has, if you want to make something like Stardust or Star Eater or things like that, uh, depending on the game state. And then the last monster is just two maxi. Uh, Maxi's a really good hand trap in the mirror. It's really good against water. Not too good against fire fist. It's pretty good against gear gear Karakuri if they're trying to go off, which is pretty cool. Um, for spells, the three seals, uh, search a heretic monster. Pretty simple text. It was semi for a little bit, but this card is awesome. I'd really like this card. That's probably the best top deck. The fact that we can go get into our monsters. And then uh, three. Dragon Shrine, Foolish Burial for Dragons, but because the whole deck is drag, we don't actually play just vanilla Foolish Burial. Um, this does have a once per turn clause on it, but it allows us to send two dragons, and then because the dragon or the heretic monsters allow us to summon from graveyard, we're essentially just putting the bricks out of our deck so we can't draw them. We're thinning our deck and we're making sure we're getting to our key combo pieces and we're trying not to draw our vanilla so this is better uh, than foolish burial because we're never going to send anything other than a dragon because the only non-dragon we play is maxi and there's really no point in sending maxi except to summon a redox which is just not as good you just rather have a dragon it just makes way more sense to have a dragon uh one wing beat it's level five or six so it does work with your dragon rulers and it works with uh all of your Erratic Monsters, not just the level 6 one, so 5 five or higher, and it's Heavy Storm, it's really cool, um, in a form with no Heavy and not a lot of chainable cards, like no Solemn Judge or anything like that, this card can come out of nowhere and just absolutely steal you games, so 1 Wing Beat, uh, 3 Upstart Goblins, we do play a 37 card deck, this deck can put more than 8,000 on board fairly easily if it, you know, goes off correctly, so we play the 3 Upstart Goblins, 37 card deck theory, and then the one Book of Moon is our last spell in the deck. Uh, you essentially just wanted a spell that you can activate in an open game state um, that's chainable as well. So I really like the Book of Moon. Again, chainability is really important. 
things like that in a format where a lot of people are playing a lot of MSTs. Uh, no MSTs for us, of course. And we have the trap lineup. So this is really cool that he played three Heratic Seal from the Ashes. This card uh, was pretty overlooked. It's really cool. I mean, the art is absolutely fantastic. But outside of that, um, on your opponent's turn, it's Foolish Burial. On your turn, it allows you to return a banished Heratic. So it only costs one to banish a dragon, essentially. So you banish two to summon a dragon lord, and then you put it back. So your dragon count is significantly higher. And then when it's destroyed, it summons a Heratic from your graveyard. And it doesn't matter how it was destroyed. Um, it you, So you can, like, scrap dragon it. Um, you can wing beat and it, it destroy your own. It's perfectly fine. This is a great scrap dragon target. Uh, this card is nuts. I really like it in this deck. It's a lot of fun. It's a really cool combo card um, to be able to make sure you on your opponent's turn, you can just flip it and then start sending dragons and uh, get your dra uh, graveyard loaded up for dragon ruler plays. Um, this card is really good. It's really fun. Uh, not a lot of lists played this card, but I really like this list, and I really like this card. Uh, two skill drains. We don't really care, so a lot of our effects are in the graveyard. Um, this card will stun your opponents a lot more than you. Uh, the only card that, or deck that I feel like this doesn't hit that well is water, because they also have the graveyard effects, and obviously it's not great in the mirror. Um, but against Girgi and Fire Fist, this card can just, just slow the game, slow the game down to your pace, and uh, you can just put your Dragon Rulers on the board, put a bunch of beaters out there, and just kind of win the game that way because your beat sticks are bigger than their beat sticks and because they will sit on the field with this on there you don't have to worry about your dragon count you spanish the two put it on there and then they have to work to get this off the board a three reckless greed multiples is kind of a f not a free win but man this card is so good in this deck because i never liked this card in water because they just had the title as their like reoccurring play where they only had that monster and that deck really relied on cards in hand and this deck you have four dragon rulers in your graveyard, so you can just you can stall with the amount of dragons. Like if you if you play this late game and you have enough dragons in your graveyard, the fact that you can sit on a Draco sack or make a big eye or something like that to really like stun your opponent, and you can play with those dragons, or you can make a star reader, or you can make a stardust, or something that you can just sit on and feel comfortable depending on what you're playing against. Uh, the not drawing for your next uh, two turns is actually not as punishing as you would think. Especially so, if you have Heretic Seal. Yeah, Seal as well. Yeah, this card with Seal is pretty good. And then the last three trap cards are just the one of Warning, Trenchal, and Bottomless. Pretty uh, staple trap cards of the time. Uh, really good. No, no issues there. On to the extra deck here. Oh, this card is one of my favorites in the extra deck. We have the one Black Rose. This card can just hands down steal games. Uh, because you can just simply tribute a heretic to special summon heretic, so you can just like like say normal your neb fet, tribute it for like a sue or something, and then bring out the level one, blow the board, summon some dragons. This is an additional dragon, and if you have dragons in your graveyard and they like Phoenix Chain or like Valor this, it's a level seven, so you can just make a rank seven over it if they stop it. This card is nuts in this deck. Uh, for eight, we have. One Stardust Dragon, again, this card is awesome. One Scrap Dragon uh, for our seal play, and just like the Debris Dragon play if you bring back the guard and then uh, use a Dragon Ruler. Uh, one Colossal Fighter, this card is awesome in the mirror. If your opponent has like like a blaster or something, you can just run this into the blaster and then uh, kill them that way. Or um, Beredo is the other one that's 28 that's relevant in the format. If they just have like a Beredo, you can just ram this into it, kill it, and then do that. Uh, one blader for the mirror for water. This card is awesome. It can lock your opponent out of the game, and it's a fire for blaster, which is relevant. Uh, one red dragon. You actually wouldn't think that this is like that great, but it's really cool against Girgia because if it attacks, like if they have a defense position monster, you can kill it, and it destroys everything. So if they're like trying to wall up on armors, or if they put like, or if they float into like a Girgiano to like if Girex floats into a Girgiano and puts it in a defense position, you can run that over. And if they have a set armor, you can pop it without triggering it, and it really sets them back. So Red Dragon is really good in that regard. And then the last monster, Secret Monster, is Star Eater. Again, this card is really hard for people to deal with, uh, especially in simplified game states. If uh, if your opponent and you are like top decking and you can get this out, they are going to have a really bad time to try and get rid of this. For exceeds, for rank sixes, we have, of course, the two tombs. 
uh, to summon just our dragon from a graveyard. We don't play Red MD, so we can't like fully take advantage of this, but honestly, this card is so good in this deck regardless. The fact that you can, again, do your rank six play, get your level one, bring out your dragon ruler, and then sync eight, um, really good. Uh, for the other sixes, we have the one bouncer. This card is really good against Gear Gia and Fire Fists, and one M7, just a standard generic rank six to bounce stuff. Um, we could reuse our Debris Dragon with this if we really need to. For sevens, we have the two Draco Sex. I never found myself making two, but uh, in certain grind games, you can definitely get to two. If I were to cut something, it would be for a second uh, Guy Charger to go over the second of two. And we only play as one, um, which I can understand. You can only need one. Uh, but this is a dragon, so again, it's another dragon to remove. These are wins, so you can remove them for Tempest, but this can be removed for anything. And then the last rank seven is the one big eye pretty staple there and we'll get on to the side deck side deck's actually fairly interesting because there's a lot of like random like random one-off hand trips like the one of maxi we obviously mean the other two so we can't sign anymore but one maxi uh two effect veilers this card is obviously good against like yergi and things like that uh for the uh from water especially because water was really really relying on gunned we have the one crow so if you can get rid of title or you can get rid of the gun target uh, this card is really good. And then, uh, one to Scarecrow. So, not only is this card good for stopping OTKs and being an Earth to banish with Redox, but if you Big Eye Gigant, if they're doing like that kind of like OTK, if you're, if you're afraid of the OTK against Gear Gear Kirkuri, you can Big Eye and then search this off Gigant, which is pretty interesting. Um, a lot of people will do that uh, for Gear Gear, they'll side, uh, the Ally of Justice guy that banishes lights. Yeah, that card's pretty good. Cycle reader. So, Ally of Justice cycle reader to like hit Bujins and stuff like that or hit uh, Light Sworn monsters. Uh, and then the last two monsters, we have one Fossil Dyna and one Fencing Fire Ferret. Fire, fire Ferret uh, deals with Ophion and things like that. And again, it's a fire monster. This is an Earth for Redox, so we make sure we have the elements and things like that. Um, again, this deck can like not use its normal summon, so in... In the mirror, this card is really good because you can just if you're if they've have already set up and you're going second, you can set it. And during your turn, if you like special Tefnu it going second, and you have like a play, you can pop their board, special summon a bunch, and then normal summon this so your opponent can't play against you. It's pretty good. Uh, for spells, we just have like one dark hole and three mystical space typhoons. Uh, you got to hit the emptiness. That's just kind of how how that works. You need to hit the side deck emptiness or any other floodgates that they would have against you. Uh, and then there's two traps. We have two overworked for fire fists. And then also, I guess you can side these in fire fists as well, but two mistakes. Just again, a good floodgate and things like that. So two mistakes. Uh, there will be some duels in the description. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more retro format content. And thanks for watching, guys.